Hello and welcome. In today's class, we'll see how we can solve this question, digit permutation cipher that has appeared in ISC Computer Science Sample Paper 2026. So according to the question, a digit permutation cipher is a simple form of number encryption where the digits of a number are rearranged based on a given key where key is within the range of one to the size of the number the key is a sequence of integers that defines the new positions of the digits. Let's try to understand this with an example. So consider the number 2613 and the key 4213. That means the first digit 2 should be placed in the fourth position. The second digit 6 should be placed in the second position. The third digit 1 should be placed in the first position and the last digit 3 should be placed in the third position and then we will get a new sequence of digits in the number. So we have to write a program to enter a number and a permutation key which is a sequence of digits greater than 0 and less than or equal to the size of the number. The program should encrypt the number by permuting its digits according to the key and the number of digits in the key must match the number of digits in the number to be encrypted. So we have to test our program with the following data and some random data. Here is an example. It's a five digit number one, two, three, four, five and the key is three, one, five, two, four. That means the first digit one should be placed in the third position. The second digit 2 should be placed in the first position and so on. And so the new number formed is 24153. Similarly, we have another example. The number is 9876 and the key is 4132. So 9 should be placed in the fourth position. 8 should be placed in the first position and so on. This continues and the new number formed is 8679. Now, in the third example, we have invalid key digits because it's a four digit number and in the key, we have positions like seven, six and five, which is out of range. That is why it shows invalid key digits. And in example four, again, the size is invalid because the number is a three digit number, but the key is a four digit number. So there's a mismatch and that is why it shows invalid key size. So that's the question. Let's start solving the program. So here I have created the program. The class name is digit cipher. So in this program, firstly, I'm inputting the number in a variable num. And then I'm also inputting the key in a variable key. Now, firstly, I'm checking whether the size of both the number and the key are same. So for that, I'm finding the length of num in a variable ln. So I've written string dot value of num dot length. So the value of function converts the number into a string and then we apply the length function to it to get the size of the number. So these are small tricks which you can use to quickly find the length of a number using the value of and length function in just one line. Similarly, we find the length of the key also. And now if the length of the number and the length of the key do not match, then we display invalid key size and we call the return statement. So because we are inside main, the return allows us to exit from main and the program terminates after printing this message. We don't proceed any further after printing this message because of the return keyword. Now, in the question, it was not mentioned, but I feel that we also have the responsibility to check for repeated keys. In the key, each and every digit should be unique. So that also we must check. So for that, what I've done, I have converted the key into a string first of all, once again using the value of function. 
and then I'm accessing each and every character or you can say each and every digit of the key as a string. So I'm extracting the digits of the key as a string using substring. So I'm extracting the i th character, i comma i plus one. That means it will extract only one character, which will be like a digit and we'll store it in the variable d. Now, once the digit is extracted, then we have to check whether it is already existing before its own position. So for that, I'm using the substring. So substring zero comma i means all the characters before i. So in that region, if this digit is already existing, using index of I'm uh, using index of I'm checking whether the character already exists because if it's present, then index of will, re will, will return a positive number and positive index. And that's why uh, we will come to know that the keys are repeated and so we'll print repeated keys. After printing repeated keys, we'll return again and we'll exit because once again, we cannot work with this key. And if the digits in the key are invalid if it's out of range. So in case the digit is less than one or greater than the length of the number, then in that case, we print invalid key digits and we return. Now, if everything's all right, then we start creating an array of characters. So this array will store the digits of the number. So that is why the size of this array is ln. And now we have converted this number into a string in a variable n. Now we are running the loop from i is equal to zero to less than the array length. And inside this loop, we are finding the position. So integer dot parsint substring i i plus one. So k is the key here. We had already declared it earlier. See over here. The key was numeric and we converted into a string over here. So the same key, we are extracting the digit, the individual digit, and we are taking it, taking it as a position and it will be stored in the array. Obviously, when the position is one, we are going to store it in zero index. When the position is two, we are storing it in index one. That's why digits pause minus one, one less, because index is always one less than the given position. So the ith character from the number is getting stored in the array. Once the digits are stored in the array, now we take an empty string where we'll be storing the encrypted string. So this will be our encrypted string. And for i is equal to zero, i less than digits dot length. So again, we are running, running the loop to uh, move in the array. And what we do, we take the digits, but which digit? the ith digit. So when we were storing the digits in the previous loop, we used pos minus one. We used the position of the key to store it in the array. So in the array, we already have the digits in the right position. And once we have the digits in the array, we are now just concatenating the digits into an empty string. So in this loop, we are just concatenating. The positioning was done in the previous loop itself because in the index, we are using pos minus one. We are not using i. If we would have used i, it would have been uh, saved in the same sequential order as in the original number. But we are using pos minus one. So every digit is getting stored in the given position. And once the entire string is ready, 
So now we convert it into an integer using the integer.parsent function. So we take this string, convert it into integer and store it in the variable encrypted and then we print the encrypted number at the end. So that's the program. Let's check the output. So let's execute digit cipher program. So it is asking for the number. So if I enter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 as given in the example and the key 3, 1, 5, 2, 4. So this is the answer 2, 4, 1, 5, 3. In the second example, we have the number as 9, 8, 7, 6. And the key is 4, 1, 3, 2. So the number is 8, 6, 7, 9. This is the encrypted number 8, 6, 7, 9. In the third example, we have 5239 as the number and the key is 4765. So it prints invalid key digits. And in the fourth example, we have 123 as the number and 2134 as the key and so it prints invalid key size. So I hope you have understood how to solve this question. That's all in this class. Thank you for watching.